believe that we had the surveillance capability to see any weapons of mass destruction being rolled out and could have gone in and obliterated that situation. I believe that invading Iraq would have found us embroiled in a civil war to which there would be no end. I've currently been critical of the war in Afghanistan for similar reasons. It's my opinion that neither Iraq nor Afghanistan poses a threat to our national security. Let's bring our servicemen and women home. If we're going to find real solutions to the problems we face, we need to look for some new answers. We can't keep doing and saying the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. That's the difference. That's the definition of insanity. Let's look at this country's war on drugs. Doing drugs is a bad idea. I haven't had a drink of alcohol in 22 years, and it's the best decision that I ever made. How could common sense, reality-based thinking help solve a problem like drugs? A problem that is consuming our nation by inches, exhausting the public wallet, clogging our courts, and filling our prisons beyond capacity. Half of every law enforcement dollar spent in America today is drug-related. Half the court's time and half the prison beds are dedicated to drug offenders. Every year, 1.8 million people are arrested for drug-related crimes in this country. That is the population of New Mexico every single year. The reality of the situation is this. Despite our best efforts, the war on drugs isn't producing positive results, and people continue to use drugs. That's the reality. In the 1920s, America faced a similar reality. Back then, it was the war on the drink. Prohibition turned otherwise law-abiding, upstanding, productive citizens into criminals. Their crime? Wanting a drink at the end of a hard day. Prohibition elevated thugs like Al Capone into the most powerful, wealthy men in Chicago. Bullets and blood filled our streets, and lawlessness reigned. Disputes were played out with guns, not in the courts. The reality was, like it or not, moral or immoral, legal or illegal, people continued to drink. Then something happened. We got smart. Instead of making booze a criminal enterprise, we made it a commercial enterprise. We licensed it. We taxed it. We regulated it. We took crime and corruption out of it. I would argue that we're better off in America for our decision to end prohibition. The reality is, is that despite our best efforts at law enforcement and interdiction, people continue to use drugs in America for the same reason people continue to use alcohol. I've come to the conclusion that 90% of the drug problem is prohibition related, not use related. And that is not to discount the problems with use abuse, but that ought to be the focus. Let's deal from reality. I think marijuana should be legalized. It's never going to be legal to smoke pot, become impaired, and get behind the wheel of a car. It's never legal for kids to smoke marijuana, keeping in mind that 50% plus of high school graduates have done illegal drugs. 100 million Americans have done illegal drugs. There are tens of millions of Americans who are convicted felons because of our drug laws who otherwise would be tax-paying, law-abiding citizens. Tax it. Regulate it. Harm reduction strategies should be adopted with drugs other than marijuana. Harm reduction strategies are reducing death, disease, crime, and corruption. Let's address the causes of addiction as a health issue and not as a criminal justice issue. If drugs, <laughs> if 
if drug use is the reality, and it is, responsible use is preferable to irresponsible use. Let's learn the lessons of prohibition and apply it. I'm the honorary chairman of an advocacy committee called Our America Initiative. Our shared mission at Our America is to advance new ideas in government. Radical new concepts like ethics and respect, <laughs> personal responsibility, and public good over private greed. The Our America Initiative exists to support men and women who share a common vision for America. There is no they waiting in the wings to swoop in and put government back on the side of the people. There's you and there's me. This is our America. This is our opportunity to build a new American dream. Thank you.